Welcome everyone. Love and peace from the Atlantean consciousness. This is Grandmaster Thor, your shining beacon in a really dark world. I'm going to cover today, are you stuck in the Elvis Presley syndrome? I don't know how many people know it or have probably don't. Um, of course, Elvis is a fascinating character beyond his um, basic rock and roll persona. And I think people who've seen him at any different time, seeing how he went from this vibrant person to this very sick, uh, disconnected person, and um, towards his later years, for a period of time, he was very much into uh, self-development and mysticism as most people at that particular time were. I mean, it was very popular and very easy, unlike it is today, uh, because it was in to uh, question uh, basic belief systems, uh, the invasion of Eastern uh, mysticism, yogis in particular, uh, was very popular then. And people think yoga is popular now, which has been as downgraded into more of a physical training than into a consciousness-raising medium, which is what it was really meant to be, at least on many levels. Um, and it was an explosion, and really we are all still living in the light of the explosion of the 60s uh, consciousness that we have today. And a lot of people like to criticize the, quote, hippie movements, but regardless of their folly into sex and drugs, uh, which a lot of it was designed and pushed that direction by the Dark Lodge, um, it was a time of major expansion and thinking. And if we didn't have that, we wouldn't have anything today. Unfortunately, all those people that went from their tie-dyed t-shirts went into the corruption of regular society because they really couldn't maintain a spiritual belief system. Like most spiritual belief systems, they won't carry you through on any difficult times, uh, regardless of whether it's Christian, Muslim, uh, or metaphysical in general. Uh, it doesn't ca carry you through. You need practical technology to get your proverbial shit together. And without that, when hard times come, you fall back and you're pushed back into the system if you're out of it by seeking the help of doctors uh, that will do nothing but kill you quickly or seeking system answers that were never there to begin with because you dropped out, but you don't have any other support system. But, you know, that's the path and that's the way this path is and uh, you need to be aware of that. But, you know, unless you have a practical system to empower yourself and to fight difficulties in your life, you're not going to really get through anything. You're just going to fall back where you came from. That's why it's so important to be part of an organization, even outwardly like the Outer Guild, uh, because at least you're connected somewhat and have a support system somewhat. And without that, you're on your own, buddy. And it's a cold, dark world out there. And when you're on your own, basically you've got a wood match. And you'll like that and you'll survive for a short period of time, but that's going to burn out and burn down and burn your fingers and you're going to be in darkness. But the Elvis Presley syndrome was the fact that, after all, your mind can do anything, so you can do anything to your body and then that won't matter because your mind's going to cancel it out. And he was living in this fake reality because it's a very easy way to live. So. You can eat massive amounts of uh, peanut butter and banana fried sandwiches endlessly, gain lots of weight, and of course, all of this doesn't matter because your mind will cancel it out and you won't have these problems. He also surrounded himself with hillbilly morons like Red Whatever and other ones that uh, really had the consciousness of a typical southerner, which is below the navel of a flea and um, then thought that he could somehow do that. He also got into a very bad contract with his manager, whatever his name was, Colonel, Colonels, or whatever his name was, who wouldn't even allow him to do shows outside of the United States, and of course denied even himself huge amounts of money um, that he could have made in foreign concerts. As a matter of fact, people make most of their money outside of the United States right now. Um, well, the United States is more about uh, stealing music. Uh, people in foreign countries turn out to concerts uh, by the tens or even hundreds of thousands and pay lots of money and make these guys very rich. 
But he was unable to do that. The farthest he ever went was Hawaii, which is not a foreign country, even though some people may think it is. <laughs> it's the 50th state, which is where 5 comes from, people, if you didn't know that. But the point is, is that um, uh, it's important to, to understand that reality and how he enslaved himself. And that it was too much of a hillbilly southern boy to fight this guy who helped him. Well, it's that kind of mentality that'll drive you right into the abyss of nothingness and destruction, as it did him. Of course, he had plenty of money. I don't think that was necessarily an issue with him. And of course, as I've said many times, that's the greatest enslaver of everything, is having lots of money. Uh, it gives you choices uh, to an uncontrolled, out-of-control, toxic mind uh, that will then manifest for you one crappy thing after another because you're not working out of your inner magical being, which will direct you down the proper path and what to do with all those big buckaroos. Um, he had a lot of the typical southern boy hang-ups and everything else, but he was trying to uh, develop himself uh, for a period of time, but uh, everyone around him, of course, crushed those things within him. He surrounded himself with no-sayer, hillbillies, born-again idiots uh, that told him that what he was doing was all nonsense, uh, yet he used to read a lot of metaphysical books for a period of time. It's hard to say how long. And... Uh, but this is not going to help you, and did seek that path somewhat. It's unfortunate he never found a good person that he could support and uh, that could assist him on a daily basis and didn't really have, you know, the macho balls that he's known for, skin all the babes, you know. Even, after all, that's a great achievement, especially when you're a movie star. <laughs> uh, that's like you know, white on rice when you're a movie star, baby. Uh, so the point is, is that uh, that's a great achievement, having lots of girlfriends. Wow. Isn't that wonderful? So that was his great achievement in life. And um, uh, we can see from even the passing on of his blood that his uh, relatives are pretty moronic idiots as well, his daughter. Uh, so the whole idea is that uh, we look at the fact of that um, what did he create with all this stuff? He created nothing because he had nothing to draw on. He had no help. He had books to read, uh, visited some uh, very disturbed gurus, the typical diaper-wearing Indian types, um, and, of course, got nothing out of it. But the main problem was is he had no support system to help him. So he lived in the delusion that, well, all these things, Think positive, think good, and your brain's going to take care of that. You won't get fat. You won't have any problems. And, of course, it's pretty sad when you die in your 40s uh, as well. But there, I will go into the instances of what apparently really happened there, which I don't think few people know about. Uh, but um, if you're going to live an empowered lifestyle and you think you're going to surround yourself with naysayers, particularly your wife, your children, your husband, uh, your parents that are that you have to either hide your stuff from or you can't discuss it with anybody. If you're going to live in that reality, uh, then you will get absolutely nowhere. Now, uh, even, you know, but it's most things in life, you know, you're not going to find uh, fantastic buddies and pals in occultism necessarily either, but at least you should communicate with people that are have the same particular type of interests and uh, are not going to give you negative energy. Because we also know in the last uh, great civilization that we have now that goes back approximately um, it's really hard to say, but, you know, uh, if you look at civilizations, uh, they don't even think there was a civilization that goes back more than 20,000 years. <laughs> so, uh, and if you look 20,000 and you put that in money, that's basically nothing in this day and age. And um, you can barely get yourself a fancy car for that. And you can't get yourself a fancy car. That's an average price of a car. Um, so the whole idea is that uh, it's, it adds up to a bunch of nothing. But, you know, because society is not going to reward you or assist you in any fashion whatsoever. Um, so if you're going to be with negative people and these negative people won't allow you to be yourself, uh, then you need to get away from them and get away from them fast. They will destroy you and everything about you. So, but, you know, if you want to live like Elvis Presley did and surround yourself in that syndrome, if you want to think that somehow everything nice and wonderful and you're going to hold a crystal in your hand like Shirley MacLaine did and stand on Malibu Beach, yeah, that's a rough neighborhood. 
and scream, I am God, I am God. If you're going to live in that kind of delusional nonsense, well, you're going to manifest uh, nothing in your life. Of course, she was able to hide in her little manifestations of writing New Age books and uh, I'm assuming surrounding herself with other things uh, that she could uh, prosper from uh, and able to get away with it. But uh, most people are not going to be able to do that kind of fantasy Hollywood manifestation. What you need to do is um, you need to get out of your life all negativity and stay non-connected to it. The point is, is when you start getting into the normal enslavement of life, which is basically sex and family, you're going to enslave yourself forever. Plain and simple. Now, if you want to play that game and be able to approach it in the proper manner, well, that is uh, something that is another discussion. I'm going to do a lecture on that as well as that how to handle these situations uh, if you want to do what we call the fifth way, which is living as a sorcerer and still maintaining and ascending. Uh, so, uh, you are not going to make it anywhere, and few people can that are uh, even in a powerful positions and have lots of money. If you're around a bunch of naysayers, a bunch of people that will not support you, and you stay in this because, well, I'm from the South, so I, I have good Southern buddies with me uh, because they are the good people. Oh, yeah, really? Come on. Is that, you know, if you're basing that again on these ridiculous stereotypes of, you know, I'm white, I'm black, I'm this, I'm that, so I'm going to have these kind of people from me, I'm from the South, you're going to find good people that support you, not people of any particular sex, race, or principality, so to speak. They're either on your team or off your team, and they have to be highly dedicated and highly watched. Uh, so the whole idea, if you want to live in the mentality of what you were growing up with, then he should have stayed in the Baptist church done what they told him and followed on. He probably would have been much better. But of course, you know, they don't necessarily like the fact that you're screwing everything that walks and that you're taking every drug you can get your hands on and have some uh, kind of strange, demented attitudes wanted to be a, um, while hopped up on so many different drugs, wanted to be a drug enforcement agent. Um, you know, very confused person. And if you stay in this confused state, walking between these two bizarre worlds where you want to change but you want to stay rooted in the old backward societies, you will fail. Plain and simple. And I think he's a prime example of a very destructive nature of someone who dies very young and really didn't accomplish anything. I mean, he really did nothing. He left a bunch of interesting music depending on how much you like or don't like it, and that's all he really ever does. Did. There's no Elvis Presley foundations to help singers. There's no Elvis Presley guitar company. There's no El Elvis Presley um, um, music company. There's nothing that is helping people to do things uh, for the sake of helping people or for the sake of profit uh, while you help people as well. And I'm a firm believer in this, uh, in this synchronicity um, as things synchronize together of uh, being able to make profit and help people at the same time. They shouldn't be exclusive to things. Uh, you should be able to do both easily where everybody benefits. So this perfect sinking of energies is what should be sought as the perfect balance in life. And few people seem to quite understand that. But what, what did he do? A bunch of records and albums and uh, royalties that go to a bunch of little brats that'll never do anything either. And they haven't done anything with their money either. The greatest achievement of uh, his daughter was apparently to become a Scientologist, uh, which I guess is better than becoming other things. Maybe, who knows, very strange organization uh, that is, at the very least. Um, so, the reality of it is that um, you can't function if you are in the Elvis Presley syndrome where you think you're going to be with a lot of unsupported people working in this other particular way by yourself. Now we talk about this to a certain extent in the schizophrenic uh, sorcerer philosophy which you need to have which is when you're in the work world uh, that you have to because you have to make a living you have to make sure you don't tell anybody of your particular interests. Um, but that doesn't 
include your home life. If your home life is a toxic, uh, is toxic with people that don't support you, you will fail, period, and you will never reach a level of high empowerment. You need to break away from those people and things that enslave you, regardless of the personal cost that that will give you for that period of time. There is no greater joy than being free and being free to operate in a higher spiritual level. And if people hold you back from that, you need to get rid of them and get rid of them at all costs and in all necessary ways. And if you're enslaved to them and want to play the other game, which is you have your family and kitties and you want to operate also in that and you want to call the what I call the three-way uh, um, split, the, schizof the tri-schizophrenic, uh, then the whole idea is, is that um, you will uh, make life extremely difficult. Very few people can pull that off where you again operate like you operate in the wor real world with uh, your quote family and then you do your uh, higher ascension and magical practices uh, away from them as well where it's none of their business. And you know a lot of people live a lifestyle like that. Uh, I highly recommend people not having joint bank accounts uh, and uh, if there are serious problems you run into in relationships that you extricate yourself from that ASAP, 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 you get out of it now, you get out of it fast before the uh, chain and ball is hooked to your leg permanently and you can't get out of it. And whatever price that has to be paid for that and whatever uh, difficult conditions uh, rugrats have to go under, well, that's just part of life. And it's the, on the only thing that you have to be worried about in life is the survival of the sorcerer consciousness. All else is secondary. Uh, and when you start taking that down and including that this so-called family has value and other things you you will you are destroying yourself uh, quite frankly if you're going to be doing that you need to get on a different path because this is not going to help you so um if you're stuck in this elvis presley uh, uh, consciousness of thinking that first of all that if you think good thoughts everything's going to manifest and as i said this kind of thinking has been perpetrating around for years tied in with the ridiculous positive thinking, which of course is just a stupid fallacy uh, that just uh, idiots really talk about, because obviously they've never applied their own principles. The, the fact of believing in something so much that it becomes part of your life at such a stage uh, is not controlling the world and changing the world. It's only keeping you centered and basically keeping you on a path of crashing, because you're not going to manifest everything in your life that you want. You're going to have failures, and if you believe the positive positive thinking, it all falls on you. You know, you pay your 10000 for seminars over a few years, and ultimately, if you fail, it's not because their seminar system didn't, uh, didn't work, it's because you didn't apply it right. You know, isn't that always the cop-out? So the whole idea is, is that uh, these types of realities will not work if you expect to get into uh, high levels of empowerment. If you want to play at the game, you want to go in and get certain benefits and fun from using occult technologies and play this game, well, you certainly can do that, and you'll find out that uh, you have a modicum of success with it. But ultimately, you're going to fall in like Elvis Presley is. You're going to self-destruct. You're going to get problems. Uh, your relationships will fall apart because they don't see you in a particular way. I mean, you know, if someone doesn't participate with you 100%, they're not on your team. And what do you do if someone's on, not on your team? If you had a baseball team and people didn't show up or they showed up and they didn't play and they didn't practice or they didn't bring their uniform, they didn't bring their bat, they didn't bring that, what would you do to a player like that? Bring them home with you? Well, if you're completely insane, you would. You would tell them, bye, you're fired from the team. Go, I'll replace you. Why should that be any different with a relationship? Um, and it's the same thing with children and everything else. If they don't follow the line of support for the entire understanding here and you haven't brought them, and so many people, you know, don't, well, they're not interested. You know, I remember one guy, well, they're not interested in it. Well, then they're not interested in getting video games. They're not interested in anything else. Uh, the point is, is that they don't go along to what you want to train them in to build them up in their particular area. Then they get nothing. I mean, what is this? Uh, that are, are you some sort of uh, deviant mental case that enjoy be having people give you negativity and inflict pain on you? 
I mean, what's wrong with you that you support people like this? And what the hell are they other than a biological lump? I mean, you know, this thing of there's something special about all this is, is an insanity of people that don't seem to quite understand. So, you know, there's only one uh, consciousness that needs to be valued on this plane, and that's the consciousness of the sorcerer. All other people are destructive and should be uh, either um, dealt with or eliminated out of your life. There's plenty of other uh, people out there. In terms of the different sexes, there's four billion other of them out there on this planet. If you have trouble finding that, then the problem is you, not the idiot that you got hooked up with. So, so he thought he could do all this. He thought he could get involved and like all these movie stars like Tommy Cruise, who's so much into Scientology that that is the last person he ever dates, or Buddha boy, Richard Gere, who hasn't ever married a Buddhist, make sure all his wives are models and movie stars because he's so spiritual. I like all of them. So if you think you're going to play that game, you're a fool and a liar. So um, the bottom line is, is that um, we are the Scientology, which have millions of members, and Tom Cruise can't find a wife who is supportive of his... No, he can't find a movie star with money. He doesn't want to support some average girl, <laughs> even though she's dedicated to the path. Apparently, I, the gossip is that was tried once. And, of course, it failed horribly. It didn't meet his expectations. Now, whether that's real or not, I have no idea. That's the gossip. Um, but I think it bears out in real life because we don't see that. We don't see him dating Scientologists uh, in any great extent. Um, he's met with a few which apparently didn't quite like that, which are fellow Scientologists, even movie stars. They weren't good enough for him. You know, he's got to get himself a nice little... Uh, goofball kitty girl. Uh, apparently he likes them young, young girls like uh, the wives he's had other than his first wife, which apparently got him on this uh, bizarre path. Um, but that's his prerogative. But the point is, is that, you know, that's a disconnect and his life ain't fulfilled because he ain't fulfilling it right. And that means his path has not activated his inner magical being. He's not making right decisions. And it means his path is wrong. It ain't complicated. People want to make things complicated, but it ain't complicated. If you're not making right decisions, whatever you're doing, you are not connecting with, or it ain't helping you connect. So all Elvis thought that could be. He thought he could hang around hillbillies and, Engl and idiots, have a manager that kept him enslaved, and he could do absolutely nothing with it. Didn't have his own production company. Didn't have his own record label. Didn't have all the things that everybody else in the world does because he didn't have any business smarts and left it all to this other guy. And of course, you know, when you're getting millions thrown at you, I guess it doesn't seem that important. But it's just bad, you know, it's bad way of operating. Just like it was a bad way of operating um, with um, uh, his business world and his private world. Um and then if you think you're going to take into this whole bad operating, non-activated, inner magical being consciousness and think that you're going to spiritually somehow evolve out of it, you're not. Because you're going to be dragged, dragged, kicking and screaming if necessary back into that reality uh, by those hillbilly idiots that you surround yourself with and the consciousness that you draw to you. So they certainly don't want you thinking for yourself if you're a manager because you want to make sure you control that person so he makes money for you. And you're certainly not if you surround yourself with people who have absolutely no level of consciousness, uh, like the hillbilly mafia that he was involved with, um, uh, you are going to get nowhere. And I think it proves it there. I mean, this isn't something that, oh, that's your opinion, duh. I don't know. Well, what happened to him, boys and girls? Did he reach any levels? Well, he reached a level of 350 pounds. Now, he reached that level. He reached a level of killing himself in his 40s. Is that not proof that whatever he was doing wasn't working? Regardless of the details are 100% correct? Well, I'm afraid it is. Is it a fact that Tom Cruise can't keep a wife? That they all stay with him until the prenup agreements where you can get your nice big amount of cash. It's 10 years, everybody. 10 years, you get the paycheck. All of them hang in there for 10 years. 
Is that a made-up thing? No, that's a fact. So it's not my interpretation. Some, um, as with most things I talk about, they're verifiable from outside sources. If you don't want to agree with it, that's just because of the fact that you don't understand the information. So when we get into that living in that false world of the Elvis Presley syndrome, I think is what a lot of people go by. And they think they're spiritual. They think if they read a few books, if they feel in a good way, that in some way that this is going to um, empower them and they feel warm and comfy inside. After all, I'm not just a dumbhead. I'm spiritual. Well, being connected to a path and not following it is much worse than being a dumb idiot, uh, born again Christian type. Um, because, you know, you've been exposed to it, you know there's a better way and you don't take it. And I'll tell you right now, you take a karmic hit for that. If you turn down your opportunity to be an empowered occult scientist, there's a karmic hit that you're going to take. And um, because, you know, when things are offered to people that are on a high level of empowerment and they turn it down, that is uh, tantamount to uh, doing an act of very much of great evil. So uh, it's more than just the physical, uh, normal, plain stuff here. There, there, are, there are a lot more things on a spiritual level that are much eviler to uh, turn down and dismiss than there is doing physical world things. So there is a problem there. And he read many books and uh, tried to help himself as he could, but ultimately these were all thrown in the trash uh, like he was a 13-year-old looking at Playboys that Mommy came in and then threw in the trash. Um, after all, I guess he should be looking at gay magazines because uh, that's what I guess Mommy and Daddy want because they didn't have you through sex. They had you through a virgin birth because that's what they are taught in the church. That's what churchianity teaches me. So, um, after all, most likely Jesus was gay anyway. After all, it says in the Bible, he loved John. He didn't love any of the other disciples. He loved John. So, um, all in all, it's important to understand these concepts um, as a uh, as an understanding of how you're going to evolve past the syndrome. But one interesting thing to close out the old Elvis Presley syndrome is that apparently, and I don't know how many people know the facts of it, that Elvis Presley uh, died on the John reading some metaphysical book uh, having a toxic reaction which uh, to codeine, uh, which is frequently uh, a drug that is uh, that you can get a um, an allergic reaction to to the point and it affects your breathing. So it's a very common side effect of, of people who take codeine is that it is something that you are allergic to. And if you get a bad allergic reaction, uh, people talk about this with things like peanuts, is that it you get a very toxic where it closes down your actual breathing capacities and you die. What's interesting is that apparently he may have been taking particularly codeine, which is for pain, uh, not as just a drug, uh, He, which apparently these were also mostly, uh, from what we can tell, prescribed to him. Um, but the autopsy showed claiming one author, and I don't you know, like everything in life, who knows what the ultimate truth is, but I tend to believe these things over uh, what is given to the public, which is nothing more than uh, glossed over nonsense. And everybody agrees, well, we don't want to talk bad of the dead or, you know, have other problems. So, you know, they blame the doctors or something as a common thing. But it was found out that he apparently had liver cancer and he was in a lot of pain. So that's what they claim. How much of that is true, I don't know, but kind of adds up to me. I'm not necessarily sure that he would be on codeine uh, if it wasn't for that, even though, obviously, um, 
There's certainly many other drugs could have been on that are interesting or being different as well. And he didn't seem to be necessarily a street drug addict. It seems to me that that makes sense and that the difficulties he was having and everything else was because possibly of a hidden cancer never discovered. Like it isn't very uncommon for doctors not to know what's wrong with you. They all tell you you're nuts. They all tell you you're crazy. Uh, if you're a woman, oh, you're, got, you know, you're just a woman and you don't quite understand. You're all emotionally upset. So you're not really sick. I heard that for years on so many people have went through that. I've had that nonsense go on in my family, even with myself, and so well, they never know anything. What do doctors know? They know one thing, how to bill you. So the whole idea is, is that you need to understand that. And you need to understand that, you know, visiting occultism is not going to achieve anything of greatness other than if you like to have a hobby and you read, but visiting ain't being. And occultism is all about being. There is no reality until the occult scientist creates it. Question everything. Believe nothing. Question all authority. Learn it. Be it. Do it.